to Gallery Guichard virtually and welcome back to virtual exhibition catalog number 25 Colored Entrance, a solo exhibit by Rico the Great. Hi Rico, how are you? Good, good, how are you all? Good. So great to see you and your work is amazing. I, I'm just like enthralled with just the walking up and just spending time at one piece and I can't move. <laughs> It's amazing, your fingerprint being in the space is almost like being inside your head, that old saying. But I, I said it in one of the intros, but I feel like I'm looking at visual rap and I need more time to just stop and hear the whole album and you know ride the painting. But tell us, how did you get into art? How did you become an artist? Uh, at a very young age, uh, my mother, who's an educator, Rosalie, like, biggest inspiration in my life, like just guided me to where I'm at today. Uh, she was uh, always setting up for her classroom and I would always join her. So I would see her take construction paper, scissors, glue, everything and just make Donald Duck and do ABCs, one, two, three and all that stuff like that. And I would always say, let me take some of that stuff home. And she, no problem, give it to me. And I would go home and just draw Ninja Turtles. Always, just Ninja Turtle, Ninja Turtle, Ninja Turtle. Got in the art class and they're like, you can draw other things. There's more stuff to the world than Ninja Turtles, but I loved it, loved them. And uh, an art teacher named Mr. Barron, when I was younger at a school called Neil Armstrong, he really got me to, hey, draw Porky Pig, draw other people and stuff like that. And that went from me doing, you know, all these pop art characters and stuff like that into just making my own stuff. And in the midst of that, I just kept doing it. and. Uh, you get older, you get older, you start building, you start learning that, you know, and you become an adult, you learn about bills, you learn about other things, you learn that the world is not just Chicago, it's all this, you get to travel, get to see stuff, and uh, that led me to where we are right now, and uh, taking the art and just actually just molding it to the experiences that I get to live every day. That's awesome. Tell me a little bit about your experience as a pop artist. Um, how did you, that it's somewhat what you said, because you were doing the popular culture with, around the animation and, and various cartoons, but how did you go from that to where you are today? Uh, to tell you the truth, it, it's, it's a hard question to answer because growing up, I would do a lot of art. I just did it. I didn't know that there was a world where people bought it. I mean, you heard about Picasso, you heard about all these other people. Like, I knew these 10 famous artists. I didn't know that there's people making a living. I mean, there's also people that aren't making a living. There's people that just do it and they're trying to get the exposure. I just did work. I never knew what pop art was until I got to college where somebody's like, oh, you're a pop artist. I'm like, I, sure, I guess. And then you start doing the research on them. Like, I just fell into the niche of just creating. Like, I've always lived that, just do stuff. And in the midst of just being in this, I met a collector that was like, hey, you're making a lot of money doing this, right? And I was like, no, <laughs> I just was doing work and everything like that. But then, you know, working and doing everything, I started researching what pop art was. And I, I mean, I, I think of myself as just an artist, but uh, with all the popular stuff that I grew up on, I take that and just mix it into the mediums and the canvases just to try to express what pops in my head daily. So, I mean, it, it, it's a weird dynamic of it. So I'm just, I'm in the game just trying to figure it out. But the pop art game is, is awesome to me because it, it got me in your gallery. It's, I've done solo shows by myself. Just not knowing what's going on. I grew up out the trunk. So, in lots of different other ways. That's just how we kind of came through it. But, uh. So, Ahmad, I love your work and I love the irony in your work. When you walk past and you look at it, you see the, it's pop culture and you see familiar characters in your work. But when you really start looking at it, it's deep. And I always say that you, you're a deep thinker. So, what is it that you want your viewer to take away from your paintings? I mean, I just want them to look at it deeper than just the cartoon characters and stuff like that. Because outside of the work, 
I, there will be pieces that won't have anything that anyone can connect to. It'll be a black woman, it'll be a black male, it'll be a white person. It'll be whatever I kind of see in the world and just at that moment when I drop the background in, what's popping through my mind and everything like that. But if when they look at it, I've, I've ran into collectors, buyers, just art people that like stuff, that they'll just see Bart Simpson. And it's like, no, Bart Simpson's in this situation because of something that I grew up on seeing. Simpsons has been on for 30 years. My dad loved it. It's something that just was in the background that, you know, I could be passing by and you just have that one moment. Something just uh, reiterates and just has a stamp in a moment of your life that I'll take to the piece and drop it in. And the wild thing about it is you're going to look at it, he's going to look at it, and anybody else is going to see something and just take something away from it. I mean, I just want people to just try to open their minds to it's not just black art. It's not just anything about race. It's not anything about financial status or anything like that. It's just, it's coming from me just to express what I saw in the world. And everybody should be able to take something from what they look at and build something their own. So the cool thing about a lot of collectors that do have my work, they'll buy something because it resonated with them for one reason. And then a month later, a year later, three years later, they're like, damn, I saw something that I never knew. So it's like something compelled you to buy this and you're always going to have another experience with it. Like, and it's, 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 I try to slow stuff down and just do, oh, I'm going to put one thing in there. And it's hard because the world's just a crazy place. And I've been blessed enough to go all around this place and meet all types of people and have amazing friends and have these conversations and understand what's going on and the dynamic of the madness really and everything like that so it's like that's what I want to put in my pieces I never want to be just defined as this specific thing it's just like let's do art let's have fun and let's run with it it's like I don't like commissions commissions are cool I like just creating and hopefully you can pull and just find something new that you can pass on to your kids and one day even if you're not a Picasso you don't become a Hebrew Brantley or something like that they have something that they can pass on and still be talking about me am I the symbolism of some of the iconic characters, whether it's Batman or Mighty Mouse, do they have another meaning in your artwork, almost kind of algebraic, where in one language we know those symbols in, from our childhood, but are you actually coding or speaking another language and do those characters mean something different in your work? Uh, in some instances they do. So uh, <laughs> when I try to speak about white privilege, I drop Batman. Like that, anytime you'll see Batman, 80% of the time is speaking on white privilege. Uh, I had to, I was lucky enough to grow up in a very diverse neighborhood because my parents wanted to get us away from the city and I moved to the suburbs, saw gentrification and just all the things that happened with that. And, and the mix of that had white friends and became really good friends with them. I have a lot of them still my best friends to this day. And uh, learned early before it became like this popular term. Like, damn, so many white people get to do things that we can't do. And they don't understand when they get chastised or stuff like that. And they use that imaginary card or book bag, which in some conversations we call it. Uh, and, you know, a Mighty Mouse might be, you know, something and anything like that. It, it just really depends on the piece and what I'm trying to really convey. But uh, yeah, when I drop the characters in, like you said, especially from our childhood, I grew up cartoons are just a huge thing, a major thing in my life. But it's hilarious to think about it. When we were kids, we're watching it and it's this thing, oh, SpongeBob did this. And you realize that when you have your own children, some of this stuff is some adult behavior. And yeah, we need to pay attention to what our kids are really watching and everything like that. But I get to use it on these canvases to really drop adult stuff. Then the day a kid could walk through this and see something, and they'll take one thing away from it. But no, if we're gonna put these characters in there, let's actually push and move a message. So when I usually put a character in there, I'm dropping some kind of knowledge. And the wild thing about it is sometimes I won't be at the gallery. Sometimes somebody might be speaking for me, sometimes it might be you all there. So it, 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 it's, it's wild because people can take any and everything from it and you'll see Mighty Mouse or you'll see Mickey Mouse or you'll see Minnie Mouse or anybody and have a different, you know, view on what and why they do there or why they're in that piece. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, we're all just learning always. You know, if it's not moving, it's dying. So kind of just in the mix of all that. So I hope that answered that. Yeah, it does. Great. 
And I love the colors that you use in your pieces. I love the size, the grandeur of it all, and it's the stories behind it. But I want to know, how do you take it from here to the canvas? I mean, you start with a blank sheet. How do you start? Wild thing about it, I came up as an illustrator, so I, I would always start with just a few lines. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not the most religious person in the world, but I used to always have friends say that's just God moving you. So same thing, I'll drop dope colors in the background. It's always different. You start with a few lines, and then just once you start thinking, maybe a beer, maybe you know, so after a meal, or your friends are in the background, the right type of music will just push me in a direction. And once you have one thing that you know just kind of start adding everything like that's like a pizza you know just boom 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 next you know you got 75 toppings and you know sometimes it's like hey i saw george floyd you know i'm gonna go in this direction when that happened and it was also in the middle of a pandemic we're stuck in the house my studio's in my house i i couldn't stop painting about that because i just saw somebody lynched on the street who would think that would happen in 2020 i don't even know what year that exactly happened but it's like how I do is all emotion, it's raw emotion. I'm always gonna be visualizing and pushing stuff on canvas that I see. And the sad thing about this country, the world, everything, is every day they're giving us stuff to work with. <laughs> so that, that's kind of just where we go with everything. So my last question, well not last question, my next question is an intro to what I see as something similar you just came back from Egypt and looking at the hieroglyphics and the temples or on the pyramids and different things. And you think about how every symbol was part of a translation that was a whole language. So if you could help our audience come into the mind of Ahmad Lee, Rico the Great, and translate for us this amazing painting behind us. So. Immediately, we know that symbol. I want you, you know, my brother was in the military, he was a Marine, my dad was in the Army. So that symbol means something. But again, this is an example of how you take something that has a definition in the world and you now put it into your work and it has a new definition. So if you could translate this painting and tell us the title and just kind of move around and, and Basically, just tell us what that means. Almost as though you're talking slang, and I'm another race, and I don't understand slang. That's what I think this is. This process could be like. Most definitely. Well, with this piece, this, uh, the title is "The Gang in One Shoe," and uh, I mean, a, a lot of people should know that you know it's like the Uncle Sam, where he's like recruiting for the for the army. I'm not gonna act like I know the exact origin of what they were trying to do, but. I, I mean, I took this one because uh, I mean, I'm born and raised from Chicago. I've been to the slums, I've been to the hood, I've been in some of the nicest neighborhoods in the world. I, I know active gang members. I know people in the military. I know people in jail. I have just been around. I've done a lot of things and uh, actually am respected in those spots. And that's a good thing because I just know how to treat people. I was always raised that way. But this piece just speaks to how crazy the fascination is of it. The gang members I know, who, some of them come from amazing families, but sometimes you come from an amazing family and not actually get the love or the respect or whatever. I mean, and a gang will pull you in from what I've learned. I mean, I've never been in one, but I know <laughs> multiple gang members from different sections, sets, all that stuff like that. It's acceptance, they want, they want to be like loved but if you love me, you wouldn't send me on a mission that could send me to jail. At least that's how I think. So I, I'm not a gullible person, but you know, everybody has their own story. Uh, but gangs are in prison. Gangs are in the police force. I mean, I think the police are one of the biggest gangs. <laughs> so actually, that's a conversation for another day. But uh, I mean, when I was doing this piece, I always thought about doing this piece and it just never, it never worked when I did the background. But when I did this background, it just, red the piece the white and the blue it, it just worked and like that's just how i move so started with the man and i went to everything i mean there's six point stars five point stars but that six point star doesn't just mean gd that six point star also goes to the jews i mean we can go gang we, we can talk about it and everything 
people are going to be connected and people are going to also do lots of wild things to take care of their people. So sets can just go across religions. I mean, people, families, cousins, neighborhoods and all that stuff like that. So uh, this piece was just, you know, an, an ode to the chaos. I mean, I think that's the best way to put it. I mean, because you, you, whether you like it or not, you're a part of a gang. <laughs> you, you got to figure it out. Some people aren't killing. Some people are just hiding money. I mean, it's you're in a gang, regardless. And if you're not, you're missing out on something. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> to me, at least. So. Wow, yeah. that's deep. That mm -hmm. is deep. Uh, you have three paintings in the hallway of yes. women and a young men. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about that. I think our audience would love to know about those three. Well, that was starting to be a collection that I was going to call Family Matters. Um, I grew up with a sister who's amazing. She's in the Nation of Islam. She's like, I know a lot of people who are powerful and wild and have done amazing things in the world. She's uh, dangerous. She's a dangerous person. She's such a little, a little lady. Uh, she's four years older than me. So the girl represents her. The boy represents me. I'm the youngest out of me and her. Uh, the mother is, uh, my mother's heavily influenced in a lot of this work. So the mother represents her. Uh, the father, my dad is awesome. He lives in Hawaii. He is uh, he's a, a traveling man. He's done a lot of cool things. He didn't make this uh, show. <laughs> but uh, that, that it, just, it just wanted to show that uh, family is super important to me. And uh, being a boy, being the daughter, and being a mother, and even the father, which is another conversation that I have a, I have a lot of my friends is like the designed terror that people do to like take away the father from the family. And uh, Kanye West, one of my favorite artists, dropped a song where he says like if the father's not present, the family's in danger. And uh, just I think that the how we worked in, to get this show and the, the father not being present in this actually speaks to just something cool. It doesn't actually speak to my story, but it actually can just open another conversation on like conversations I've heard from women that like having not having that man in the household actually changes a lot of things. But uh, those pieces, I love them because everything in there and all the words I dropped in there are just stuff that I've seen. All my friends have families. You might not know your mother, you might not know your father, they might have died, they might have done this. I've learned from any and everybody I've been around and family ultimately matters. So like that's where I was going to go with that. Family but matters. It, it, it matters. It's a good show too. Really good show. <laughs> <laughs> Before I ask about this next piece, okay. I'm looking at the work and there are two things that I think about. Social justice and urban expressionism. Are you a social justice artist or are you a urban expressionist? What would you say or is there not a word for I, I just don't think there's a word. I'm just a, a random artist. I, I mean, whatever needs to be addressed, I feel it's a need for me to just drop it in. I mean, I. I learned one thing about the star world, man. There's, there's, there's vultures out here. There's, there's ball hawks that'll come and take your stuff and buy it and drop it away. There's people that won't get it. There's people that will get it. I just do. Like, I just know about creating. And like, as long as I can breathe, I'm gonna go. I'm always gonna go, I'm always gonna create. So I, I don't think there's a word that actually can just define what I do because I just do stuff. I mean, and it, it rubs people the wrong way sometimes and it doesn't matter to me really. I just like working. I like doing whatever I want to do and everything that I've always been a free spirit and creating is just gives me another avenue to just have more conversations like outside of art I do so many other things and like I'm just blessed enough to just work fast enough and be able to just drop bombs I think every single piece I drop is a bomb there's something in there that will hit you something in there that will trigger you and stuff like that and like people think trigger is a bad word I mean it's, it, it's a part of life I mean, as long as you're here you gotta move you gotta do so I, I don't think I'm any of that but I'll stand up and fight or paint at least you know whatever I see and you know feel at the moment that's great the lady in the blue dress my last question mm -hmm. What is that thing? Go back to my mom. I mean, uh, it, it, the, the Rose, Rosa Marie Lee is a, an amazing person. She raised me. She let me be free. I never had a curfew. I never, she, she just told me to just stand up for myself and just be myself and also realize that you can only do for yourself 
people in your family are going to let you down. Your friends are going to let you down. You got to just be yourself and take care of yourself and always keep your head on the swivel. She took care of not just my family, just directly sister, dad, grandparents, all that stuff. She takes care of everybody. If there's a funeral, she's the person that's getting everything situated. She's the person up there speaking. I've lost some of my best friends and couldn't stand up and talk. And these are people you care about. She's the person, she's the rock. So like anything in that stuff, I mean, psh, that's it. Like it's, she handled business. She takes, she took all my friends and they're her sons. Like they've had terrible things happen in their life. Don't gotta answer no questions. Like they're there, she'll just do it. And like, that's why I don't have kids at all, but it's like, I think it'll be a really easy transition. Cause I got to like come up under somebody that's that powerful and stuff like that. So that's just, you know, and some of my friends, even like that, I just seen people sacrifice. And I think that's one of the hardest things in the world. It's just like, what do you got to do to get stuff done and stuff like that? I've seen people fold, break. I've never seen her complain, nothing. 35 years old, not old at all, but damn, that's a long ass time to see somebody just handle business. So anything that's strong women is all implanted from like my homies, but my mom is always there. That's, that's a it. great message. Most definitely. And that, she's AKA too. She, she all right. Ass. She's she, my she, soror. She, yeah, and my sister's a Delta. It's insane. Awesome. Wow, this is the world. So in the, in the pieces, there's the pinks and the greens. I, saw I that. love it. I yeah. Hidden in there. Oh, yeah. It wasn't for me. I, I'm not built for it. But, uh, you know. Yeah, they, that's I awesome. Gangs. <laughs> I was just talking about you and the gang. Because <laughs> you know, AKA is not going to be paid for a long time. So I love them. I love them. Uh, doing great like, things, though. Almost definitely. And, almost and you know, I'm just so proud of of you because you're, you're you can tell the you know your background you can tell that you're deeply rooted and your art really speaks to that and I think that you know we've got people who've already collected your work here from the gallery you've already sold artwork and I really truly believe that you're going to just get a great you know audience of people who will love this work and you're going to really do well so Appreciate I'm really proud of you I know Andre is yes. too. We're excited. Can't wait for the exhibit to open. This has been an amazing ride. Who gets the opportunity at an opening to spend this much time in the mind of a creative genius, Rico the Great. And I use the parallel of a great Slick Rick song. You know how fun it is once he gets you going and you start moving around that whole album, you feel like you're running with him. That's how you feel when you ride the paintings of Ahmad Lee. So make sure you drop down to the virtual exhibition catalog section of Gallery Guichard, virtual exhibit catalog number 25, colored entrance. You can touch the matter tag, get the title, medium price, and we can also share the synopsis for each painting so you can go on your own personal journey. And to find it, go to www.galleryguichard.com. And if you see something you like, please email us at galleryguichardsocial at gmail.com. It's easy as one, two, three. Touch the virtual exhibit catalog of your choice. This is virtual exhibit catalog number 25. Let us know about the work you like. You can contact either of us. See art, love art, buy art, live with original art. See you next time at Gallery Shop.